Dr. Pramod Reddy Kandakure, I am Chief Cardiothoracic and Aortic Surgeon and Minimally Invasive Surgeon in Medicover Hospital, High Tech City, Hyderabad. I will discuss regarding valve surgeries in detail. So in a heart, there are four, four valves are there, there are four chambers are there and which are separated by four valves. So right side two valves are there, left side two valves are there. Left side valves are more important because left side is the more pumping, left side heart is a pumping chamber for the whole body. Right side valves, there are two valves due to back pressure changes, these valves also can be damaged. So what are the common conditions which can damage these valves? In Indian setup, it's a rheumatic heart disease. If you have an infection in the heart when you are when you are a child you get a sore throat and that infection goes into the heart and then valves get damaged over the period of time it, it gets scarred and it gets calcified and the valves are damaged when you are at around 10 years 15 years sometimes we see in 40 years also so these valves progressively gets damaged and fibrosed this is called rheumatic heart disease other pro other problem is ischemic heart disease when you have a heart attack or coronary artery disease where the arteries to the supplying the blood to the heart gets blocked then the some part of the myocardium becomes dead and that myocardium doesn't move properly so then the valve starts leaking that is called a ischemic heart disease the third one is a degenerative heart disease degeneration means as the age progresses the valve degenerates or gets damaged because of wear and tear of the valves so these are three plus fourth one is congenital congenital valve valvular problem some the valves are fused or there is some cleft in the valve or there is a hole in the valve so these four types of valves problems can have occur so what problems do you normally face so the first thing you have is shortness of breath is a breathing difficulty when you walk or when you climb stairs there is a effort decrease in effort tolerance that means your effort when you are making a little exertion that time your effort goes down so you you feel breathless sometimes swelling comes in the comes in your leg sometimes if you get you get a repeated chest infection so these are the signs or symptoms where you you can suspect heart heart problem is there which is related to the heart related to the valves so you have to go and consult the doctor and then get an echocardiogram, x-ray, ECG and then the valve problems we detect. Some initially if the valve sometimes if you are detected early the valve may be mild or moderate. We normally treat these patients with some uh, diuretics and some uh, AC inhibitors so that over the period of time the heart function will improve and sometimes the leak disappears if it is because of infection or myocarditis and then that subsides so after if it is not subsided over the period of time over the period of time the valve progressively gets damaged and it becomes more severe then in those cases we need to do intervene or we need to do surgery under undergo <coughs> you need to undergo surgery depending upon there are indications are there when the valve is more damaged we have to do surgery so what surgery options are there one is valve repair surgery, another one is valve replacement surgery. If the valve is minimally damaged and there is not much pulmonary artery hypertension, the lung pressure is not high, we can repair the valve. So most of the valves who come to us very early stage, we can repair th those valves. Repairing the valves, the advantages are there, so you have your own native valve, your own valve, we can repair it, we require a ring to stabilize the repair. So this is valve replacement <coughs> means we have to change the valve. We have to remove the valve because it's not repairable. It is damaged extensively. So we have to repair it. Uh, we have to replace the valve and then put a new valve. New commercially available valves. There are varieties of valves are there, but grossly they are divided into metal valves and the tissue valves. The metal valves we usually uh, use in persons who are less than 50 years of age because they last little longer compared to the tissue valves they last somewhere around 15 to 20 years the tissue valves we put after 60 years of age between 50 to 60 it's a patient choice whether they want a mechanical valve or tissue valve so what are the advantages or disadvantages of mechanical valve over tissue valve in the mechanical valve as i said the longevity is more they last for 15 to 20 years the disadvantages is that blood thinning tablet is required because 
these valves are, have a metal and these have a hinges. So if we don't take uh, blood thinning tablets regularly, the blood clots will form in the hinges and there are chances that the valve will get stuck or the clot might dislodge from the valve and go into the brain or kidneys or anywhere in the body. So this is the main disadvantages. So if you are young patients, still you this valve is preferable. If you are a sports person or if you have a, your job needs some, it's a high intense job where there are chances of getting body injury like wrestlers or sports person, then these valves are not ideal for these types of persons because the blood usually is thin. So any injury will bleed more. Plus you need to do a testing regularly. So if the blood that is called PTI and a test to check how much is it, the blood is thin. So if blood is very thick, so clot will form in the blood and then in the valve and valve will get stuck or some clot will form in the brain or in the heart or in the kidney vessels and you might have a problem. If the blood is more thin, then the bleeding will happen into the brain or you will have, uh, if especially in females, the periods, during the periods, there is a excessive bleeding is there. Sometimes you find uh, blood in the urine also. So that is the reason you have to do a test regularly. So initially the tests are once in a week, then after once in 15 days we can do once in a month, once the dose is stabilized and then every three months it needs to be done. So this is valve replacement. The tissue valves are better. We give only three months of anticoagulation or blood thinning agents. So once the three months are over, are over just echo spring, a small, a small blood thinning agent where no testing is required and there are less chances of bleeding. That is the reason we especially advise these types of valve in those persons who are more than 50 years of age, ideally 60 years, plus those persons who have, who, whose job or who have a high intensity job where physical contact or chances of getting injury is more. These types of patients, we use these types of valves. There are a variety of valves are there, different different company produces variety of valves. The cost of the valves also differ upon the quality of the valve. So this, these are the surgeries we, we can do. The, in congenital heart disease, we have to uh, do a repair of the valve because we, it is not ideal to replace the valve. So most of the 99% we repair the valves and plus associated heart disease, whatever hole is there or some tube is small, that type of diseases also, we have to take care at the same time. In ischemic heart disease, where the heart coronary arteries sub, which supply blood to the heart gets blocked and there is a leak, leakage in the valve. So these types of patients, we do coronary artery bypass surgery as well as valve repair. So these patients, sometimes if the heart function is very poor, requires IABP support, and they might stay in the hospital a little longer. So these are the valve surgeries we do very commonly in our setup or with good quality and uh, good results. So these types of surgery, as I said, it's conventionally also, it can it, it is done by cutting the breast bone and uh, it's a big incision, we cut the breast bone and then suture it back. And these types of surgeries in selected patients, we can do through right side or just making a small incision on the top, keeping the intact breast bone. So only small part of the upper breast bone is cut. And uh, the advantages of having this type of minimal invasive surgery is because bone is not cut, you can start uh, using your uh, hands and limbs and uh, you can start using uh, weights as early as possible. The scar is not seen plus it is less painful, there are less chances of infection, less blood requirement and uh, it's a boon for uh, unmarried girls because scar is not seen as, or and also it is for the young uh, pe persons who are very conscious about their body uh, scarring and body status and body physique. So especially it is very important plus you can get back to normal as early as possible. So these are Having said that, these surgeries are not for all, uh, minimal invasive surgeries are not for all diseases. We have to select the patients which we can do depending upon their heart condition plus depending upon their physical status of the physical status. So if it's very obese, 150, 180 kg and uh, the deep chest is there, heart is stuck inside, then these types of surgeries, we have to do a conventional way, open surgery.
So these, these are the surgeries which are very commonly done uh, in valve surgeries.